Let me start by greeting you in my traditional way with the call that you would hear if you came to Gombe National Park. The greeting of the chimpanzee to roots and shoots in this room, free the children and roots and shoots around across the country and around the world. I want to start off by sharing with you the message from my mother, because I went out to Africa when I was 23 years old. I wanted to live with and study animals and write books about them. And everybody thought I was crazy, I was the wrong sex. We didn't have any money, we couldn't even afford a bicycle. But my mother would say, if you really want something, and if you really work hard, and if you take advantage of opportunity, and if you never give up, you will find a way. So I, I got there. <laughs> You guys, you're taking away all the time. They've only given me eight minutes. So please be quiet. <laughs> I simply want to say this. Chimpanzees are like us in so many ways, in their biology and in their behavior. We differ in one major way. We have this amazing language. I can talk to you about things you've never heard about and you can understand. We can plan for the distant future. We can have discussions. We can learn. Our intellect has developed way beyond that of even the brightest chimpanzee. So how come, how come that this amazingly intellectual species is destroying our planet? I won't go into all the ways we're destroying it. You know them, and I don't have the time, the luxury of going into some of it. But you know that animal species are disappearing, and forests are changing to desert, that we're getting water shortages, that we're recklessly burning fossil fuel, that we're creating methane by the intensive farming of animals, that there's this thing called climate change, that the ice in the north is melting, that sea levels are rising, that some people living on islands have actually had to leave their home because of the effect already of global warming. And so no wonder, as I've been traveling around the world, I've found so many people have lost hope. And it's not only these environmental problems. It's the problems of poverty and hunger. It's the problems of slavery, which gave rise to free the children. It's the problem of disease and war and the threat of nuclear war. All of these things, no wonder people have lost hope. And that's what led to my developing Jane Goodall's Roots and Shoots, now in 111 countries. It's about young people getting together, using this power of discussion, and thinking about the problems surrounding them, and choosing three projects to make the world a better place, one to help people, one to help animals, one to help the environment, and learning to live in peace within ourselves, between our communities, between religions, between cultures, and between us and the natural world. Roots and Shoots is empowering young people to take action. And it's about the elders working with youth. It's about partnerships, Roots and Shoots and Free the Children, and many other groups out there, so that we can create a critical mass of young people, that's you, who understand that there are values in this life more important than just making money. We have youth leaders, those who are selected for their passion, for their ability to inspire others. And these young leaders are going out as ambassadors, ambassadors for the animals, for the environment, and for suffering humanity. And so I have great delight in presenting to you, before I finish, one of our outstanding young leaders, Shanae Healy, who's here to just give you a short greeting on behalf of Roots and Shoots.
Aho Matakuyase. That's Native American Lakota language for greetings to all my relations. The reason I start with that today is because we're all related in some way by a common thread. And that thread is that we care. We care about more than ourselves. I truly feel so proud and honored to be here today. When I look out at you guys, I see so much potential. We need to capture that today and put it to good use. Being here with everyone helps us to realize that we do not work alone in these efforts to make our world a better place. Knowing that we have a support system all over will help us stay motivated and hopeful and productive. One of my favorite quotes from Dr. Jane Goodall is that every individual matters. Every individual has a role to play and every individual can make a difference. That goes for every individual action and every individual person. It doesn't matter how old you are or where you grew up or what language you speak. By taking steps in a positive direction, you are making a difference. Being a leader and being the change doesn't mean you have to be the one on the stage with the microphone. It means that you are making a commitment to do what you do best and what you love knowing that that is what it takes to make this world a better place. <laughs> Roots and Shoots recognizes that everyone has their own unique quality to add to the mix of our world. If turning trash into art makes you happy, do it. If singing about peace makes you happy, do it. If picking up cans and bottles then looking back at a clean beach makes you happy, do it. <laughs> Projects don't have to be huge and over the top to be successful. They don't have to extend past your home country's borders or even past your own community. All they need is good energy and effort toward a better tomorrow. I know that our generation have had a lot of problems heaped onto our plate. But throughout these challenges, we need to remember to celebrate, to rejoice in the fact that we walk our talk. Remember that even one action, no matter the size, has an impact. Our, add up, our actions add up and collectively we are making change. Thank you all for helping our generation have an impact that's a positive one. I'm proud to be part of this movement with all of you. Thank you. So, Shanae, just one of our wonderful youth leaders around the world, and bringing them together to talk about the problems of the world. I wish every politician had been there to listen. People ask me, Dr. Jane, do you really have hope? Can you have hope? You've seen so many chimpanzees go, so many forests cut down, so many wetlands drained, so much poverty, misery, and suffering. You know about the overconsumption of the elite communities around the world. Do you really have hope? Well, I've got four simple reasons. One is this amazing brain, and yes, we've used it to create destruction, but we're beginning to get together now around the world and use our brains to find new ways of living in harmony with the natural world, new ways for industry to do what it does without leaving so much harm and destruction behind it, and new ways that each of us can think of in which we ourselves can lead lives that are leaving, uh, leaving less heavy ecological footprints. Secondly, the resilience of nature. Animals on the brink of extinction can be given another chance. Places that we have utterly destroyed, we can give another chance. And there's the indomitable human spirit, people who tackle seemingly impossible tasks and won't give up. 
And there in all walks of life, there's the Dalai Lama, His Holiness, who was here with us this morning. What an amazing life he's led. What an impact he as one person has had on the planet. There's Craig Kauberg and Mark who started Free the Children. All these amazing people tackling seemingly impossible tasks and never giving up and carrying on. And just the person down at the end of the road in a little shop, talk to them, find what they've overcome, find how they have managed somehow to overcome all kinds of both uh, perhaps physical or social problems. And finally, there is the power of youth. Young people like you who understand the problems and are empowered to take action. Can we make this a better world? Can we save the planet? Yes, yes 